Watch this video and try to figure out what animal this is. Let me play another one. Yeah, that was not a spider. This is a classic case of a bamboozler by the spider-tailed horned viper, a species only first described in 2006 and currently only found in western Iraq. They have one of the most elaborate caudal lures in the animal kingdom, prey lure at the end of their tail. And as we saw in the video, it's clearly successful. And I show more of that footage in my new YouTube video and tell you everything there is to know about them. The reason 1 million and 6, you should be grateful you're not a fish. The goblin shark, rarely seen and estimated to get up to 18 feet long. They've been found in oceans all over the world at up to 4,000 feet deep. They have a strange way of hunting called slingshot feeding, where their jaw projects out of their mouth at 10 feet per second. Most fish have jaws that aren't entirely attached to their brain case. In species like the goblin shark and this viper dogfish, it's evolved to be extreme. If I was a fish, I would find this to be disrespectful. Hold on! Uh, it's getting worse! Let's recap the most painful stings in the animal kingdom. From the Schmidt Sting Pain Index, the bullet ant, found in Central and South America. They're also known as the 24-hour ant because the pain can last 24 hours. Schmidt described the pain as walking over flaming charcoal with a three-inch nail embedded in your heel. The warrior wasp, also found in Central and South America. The pain can last two hours and Schmidt described it as torture, chained in the flow of an active volcano. The tarantula hawk, found in the Southwest United States. They paralyze tarantulas with their toxins and lay eggs on them, so the larva can eat the spider from the inside out. For humans, the pain lasts about five minutes, but is described as a running hair dryer has been dropped into your bubble bath. And the executioner wasp, never ranked by Schmidt, but by Coyote Peterson's standards, is the king's sting. It burned a hole in his arm and is found in Central and South America. The best way to avoid getting stung by these insects is to not grab them with forceps and press them against your skin. Reason 1 million 7, you should be grateful you're not a fish. The viper fish, the poster child of rock bottom. Their fangs are so big they can't fit in their mouth. It's used as a jail cell. They unhinge their jaw and engulf their prey. If it doesn't go perfectly to plan, that's okay. They'll just impale them instead. They're found at depths of up to 5,000 feet and get up to a foot long. And they've been observed hanging motionless in the dark with their bioluminescent lure flickering, which is just horrific. This is a lake at the bottom of the ocean that kills anything that wanders into it. It's called a brine pool, formed by thick concentrations of salt that can't dissolve with the surrounding water and leaves unknowing animals unable to escape. But some have learned to take advantage of this, like this eel that goes scavenging in the pools. But that doesn't mean they're immune to toxic shock from spending just a second too long inside. Others have evolved to live right on the edge, teetering on life and death, with the constant possibility of something dropping in, leaving them in the splash zone. Imagine if every time you approached a woman there was a chance she'd kill and eat you. Like this male peacock spider that dances like his life depends on it. And if he catches her while she's hungry, she's gonna pounce. If he's swift enough, he'll work it into his dance moves. And if not, boom, execute it. Or the nursery web spider, this little guy. He brings gifts wrapped in lavish silk. The gift is a fly. If she doesn't like it, boom, execute it. A male black widow will approach a female by vibrating his abdomen on her web to indicate his presence. The second it feels like prey, boom, execute it. And if he's successful, boom, execute it after. If you ever see this millipede, don't touch it. They produce cyanide that leaks out of their body. It's called the pink dragon millipede and is only one of over 3,000 species that can do this. These toxic millipedes are part of the order Polydesmida or Polydesmida, and they produce hydrogen cyanide or formic acid to harm and potentially kill their predators. It either leaks or sprays out of pores along their body. And they had plenty of time to evolve to do this because they were some of the first animals to ever walk on land, even evolved to be the largest land invertebrate that ever existed. And I tell you all about them in my new YouTube video out now, as well as tell you what the world was like around the time they evolved. This is one of the fastest and deadliest snakes in the world. They can reach 12 miles per hour, and two drops of their venom can kill a human in 30 minutes. It's called the Black Mamba, also known as my worst nightmare. They're found in Sub-Saharan Africa and get to 14 feet long, and they're named for the color of their mouth, which they show as a warning of their Grim Reaper status. They're highly aggressive when threatened, and can move quickly with a third of their body lifted off the ground. My mamadou told me to tell you my own experience with them, so here's a summary. I found out about them when I was living in their territory. I asked my supervisor what to do if I ever got bit, and she said, text my friends and family goodbye. Luckily, the only time I ever saw one was when my friend accidentally ran over one with her car. This worm might be the longest animal on the planet, but they're too stretchy for scientists to actually measure. It's a type of ribbon worm, which you might think you've never heard of. But if you've seen this video, yeah, that's another ribbon worm. There's over a thousand species ranging from a centimeter to potentially 180 feet long. But like I said, too stretchy to know for sure, because they contract their body to a tenth of their length when threatened. Of course, they also have this, a proboscis. Another thing they do when threatened. Depending on the species, it could be sticky or spiky or even eject toxic chemicals. A lot of people have been making videos of my son for creepy content this month, and I have had enough. How could you say those things about him? Look at him. 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 He's just a little guy. Eight inches long, max. And he lives in the cold where there's no light. That's why his eyes are so big. So he can find something to eat. This is clearly a face made for modeling. It should be plastered on clothing accessories, which is what I'm working on right now to spite you. Don't listen to them. 
Have you ever heard of a rat king? If you haven't, I guarantee it's not what you think it is. Here's a good representation of it. I would show you real pictures, but I'm not trying to get banned today. On very rare occasion, groups of three to 30 rats have gotten tangled together at the tails, forming what is called a rat king, where the only way out is death. Only 60 rat kings have been seen in the last 500 years, and no one has ever seen one develop. But it's thought that it happens when they huddle together in confined spaces in cold months. Since their tails have a grasping reflex, it's easy for them to get tangled up. The longer they stay there, the more substances get involved, making them not too sticky to untangle. They're permanently stuck. For a long time it was thought they were man-made until last year when two living rat kings were spotted in Europe. I show footage of it in my new YouTube video and show real pictures of the largest rat king ever found. 